When a disaster hits, there's usually a lot of confusion. There are things in chaos. Systems are not working. The real key to recovering from one of these problems when they occur is all of the planning that you did prior to that event happening. If you've spent a lot of time considering all of the different contingencies, all of the different resources you would need available, things will go much better than if you had not planned for this to begin with. Whenever somebody says, we have a disaster, we're calling a disaster, we need to now use our plan to go through the process, then you need to know exactly what to do. And this does take practice. Usually this is something that you test with. Even if a disaster doesn't happen, why don't we go in a room? Why don't we go to another facility? Maybe go to our off-site location and pretend a disaster really occurred so that we can see how well our test really does work. Hopefully, you will have most everything work as it should, but there will always be situations where something was unplanned, something you didn't think about, or something you did plan for does not work exactly the way you might expect. So you need to also consider the fact that not everything in your plan is going to go exactly as you might expect it to go, and you need to be essentially prepared for those unexpected occasions. You need to keep your mind open, you need to be flexible, and make some decisions perhaps on the fly to resolve some of these problems that you may have no idea were going to happen to begin with. As you're looking at your disaster recovery plan, you should look at it and wonder, what could happen here? What should my plan be here? If this plan does not work, what are my options going to be? We see this happen a lot with the military. They go in on a mission. Something doesn't go as planned, but that's okay. They've got a plan B for that. They've got a plan C for that and a plan D. You should also think about that in your disaster recovery plan and make arrangements to resolve or have options available to you should any of these particular things not go as you planned. Now, if this doesn't work, then you need to also consider what you do in that situation. And of course, you can only do this a certain number of times. Well, we'll have a generator. What if we don't have a place to get fuel? Well, we'll have some fuel available. What if that fuel runs out after a certain amount of time? Well, we'll go to our third party. What if the third party isn't available? So obviously, you can only set up so many possibilities for these problems that occur. But you should already have at least a couple of things in your pocket ready to go should any of these problems happen. And then you'll know what to do with that. The, these secondary plans, these things that you set up as contingencies, become extremely important during a disaster because there is so much confusion and so much chaos going on around you. People have now been hit with a disaster. Things are not as they normally are. You have other concerns, not just things at work, but also personal concerns to consider on occasion. And of course, this is something different for people. Whenever something is different in what we're doing, things change a little bit. People become a little bit on edge. So you also have to plan for your people as well and make sure that you have a plan that everybody can adhere to. And when you have that, it makes everybody feel a little bit better about what they're doing as well. You obviously can't plan for every possible contingency, but you can come very close. And you should always consider creating the most detailed contingency plan that you can. It will really help you should the disaster actually occur. If you're in charge of putting together a contingency plan for disaster, one of the things you may have noticed is there's not a lot of resources available. There's a number of books on the subject, but honestly, relatively speaking, there are not a lot of people that have actually gone through a large-scale disaster. So it's difficult to find people that know what's going on. The United States federal government, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, have created a document called a special publication 800-34. You should search for that in your Google search. This is the Contingency Planning Guide for Federal Information Systems. One of the nice things about having this guide is that it's a good best practice, a good place to go for a checklist of things you should consider when putting together your contingency plans. There are a number of different kinds of contingency plans in this document because there are a number of different kinds of disasters you might go through. You also have in this document things like preventative controls, so you can consider things you might want to do prior to the disaster so that if a disaster does occur, it either does not affect you or it affects you in a smaller amount than it would be if you didn't have these controls in place. This discusses backups and some best practices you should consider to make sure that your data is safe. There is testing and how you should go about testing these disaster plans. And you, of course, how to create a plan. 
If you're starting from scratch, this is a great place to go to learn a little bit more about what you should make sure that you have in your disaster recovery plan. And lastly, the technical considerations. These in systems that we have and these environments we work with are extremely technical, and there's some special things you should consider when you're putting together your disaster recovery plan.